All righty. So um, when you're on the other pump, then you know the, about the flow control. That's the flow control. Yeah. And, and then you got uh, rev up and down for the engine. That's the throttle. Right. And the kill switch. That's the choke or the kill? Kill. Okay. This is main shut off for the battery. Main battery shut off. All right. Right. And then you just got pump on and off. Okay. Start. This turns your main pressure gauge off. Here. All right. If you blew if you blew the gauge, the gauge starts leaking oil. You can turn it off. All right. That just uh, pressure maybe. No, no, it just turns the gauge off. Okay. Yeah. Um, these are prone to, to blow out. You get too much, you know, after so many years of going up and down, up and down, they finally blow out. Um, you got forward and reverse here, All right. manually. All right. And uh, um, for agitator, forward and reverse, okay. neutral and reverse. All right. Now, as far as grease points, Harold, which are the grease points on this machine, please? Oh, okay, so um, if you look under here, you got one, and that goes for the back bearing. You got two on the shift arm. Okay. Three for the dummy agitator. Four for the front bearing. And then one for the motor side. Okay. And that's about it. That's it. And, and then it, you got the grease, uh, the axle. Yeah, for the two axles, your bearing buddies. Okay. All righty. Um, I, I usually grease um, every 50 yards. So when 50 is leaving and 60 is backing up, grease. And then when you wash down at the end of the day, grease. And that pushes, uh, as you can see, it's just a rubber boot. Hold that bearing. In. So, and then you got that O-ring for the caption. Um, to, when you get done, you're gonna push the, the grout that's built up around that shaft away from it. You wait till you get back to the yard, it's too late. The grout gets hard. Now, Harold, as far as general maintenance, say for example, hydraulic oil, filters, engine oil, uh, belts, uh, water, all that stuff, what what, what would be the, the, the precautions water, to take? Water in the water box, only, only, correct. I know a lot of guys use hydraulic fluid and slick pack. Uh, don't, don't fool around that, it just makes a mess. It's designed for water, you dump it every, every job, close it up, wash it up, fill it up the next morning. Um, when you keep oil in it, you don't see the bolts get loose with the piston cup. Piston cup coughs up, now you're pumping on one side of the whole job. That makes it for a long day. Um, the, the idea is for to put water in there is because you can see it every day. You drain it, you know what I mean? You check to see if, the, if there's oil in it, then you know the packings are going bad in the dip zone. You wouldn't know it if it had oil or something. Um, I've, I've had several, uh, several times I've, uh, evac the hydraulic system and there was slip pack in the hydraulic tank and that's due from the packing point that it sucked it through and it drove back the tank so it will happen. So just water. Um, not overnight either. That's a hydraulic filter up top there. Right, you got oil, oil for the motor, fuel for the motor, you got the air cleaner here, and then this is the hydraulic. The hydraulic filter. filter. So that's the one that you can take a, the take apart, remove the inside piece, and put another one in without having to replace the whole casing. Okay. Correct. Right. Right. Just a canister style, and that's every 250 hours. All right. Not on the hydraulic oil, on the motor oil and the motor filters. Correct. Correct. Now, as far as the hydraulic oil, what are the precautions to take with the hydraulic oil? You know, just like any excavator, you know, it's your blood. If it gets contaminated, you need to clean it up, or you cough up the main pump. Um, we use AW46, which is anywhere 4,600 hours. So you should be good for about a year before you have to clean there or uh, have to worry about it. As long as you don't keep overheating, keep overheating it, it'll turn black. You know? Now about condensation. Right. Um, it's from you know, the machine getting hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, you, you will get some condensation. So once a week, there's a drain over here on the far side. And you'll see it. See it right there in the, on, see it right there, right down here. See the little plug at the bottom? Okay, yeah. And that's just a check valve. You're gonna break that loose about a half a turn and it's gonna start coming out the bottom. Close it off. Alright, so it's all the way. And you're gonna do that about about once a week, once a month. You can just get in the habit of doing it. Um, what'll happen is the water will keep filling up, filling up, filling up, and then pretty soon boom, it'll suck through the main drive. That's it. It'll blow it instantly. Unfortunately, um, the tolerance on those Rexroth uh, main drive pumps are so close, I keep my hair blow on, you know, it, 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 don't, it don't take much. Um, you got your overheating horn here, if the engine should overheat, the horn will go off. 
Correct. Um, it, it's air cooled doys, so you know you shouldn't have a, a, an air issue. The only time it'll heat up is if um, the belt breaks or the center plug for the old thermostat plugs. If it gets stuck closed, then of course it'll heat up and the alarm will go off. But I mean, we've only had one in the 10, 15 years, so chance yeah. of that happens. So it's just two, those three position switch. Right. That, it, that's if you if you hooked up a remote, you can go down. All right. If you hook the remote up. So that, that, that's the main off and on, and then you have neutral here too. You're neutral. Three, three positions here. Three that's positions correct. Two. So if you had this on, you could turn it off. You know what I mean? Okay. Or if you got this on, you could turn it off here. Either or. Once that turns on the hydraulic system, it, it actually go, it runs to the HO valve here. Okay. And that's the main drive fluid running through the system. Um, when you turn it off, it just returns it right back to tank. Because the zero, uh, zero displace, displacement pump, it's always moving fluid. It has to. So when you turn it off, all it's doing is just keep the boat going tank. And then when you turn it on, it, it lifts up the air tilt valve and it the, on the main, you know. Then the pump sees it and through the load sensing line and it comes on 100%. Well, as much as this, this right here leads to the load sensing line. So the more you screw this in, you know, actually you're working in percentage per se. When you screw that in, you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and then it closes off, you know what I mean? So that's a demand actually. It, they call it flow control, but actually it's a demand on the pump. This is the actual flow control. Correct. Well, it's an HO valve. Yeah, that's it, it, um, all, even the new pumps. When you hit the e-stop, it dumps that. When you turn the switch off, it dumps that, and that just returns it right back to tank. Because uh, hydraulic fluid is like people; it's lazy by nature. You got to force it into something. You know, like a cattle herd. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> that's what it does. This we don't want to go on over three thousand. Um, it'll pressure out at three hundred bar, okay. and the machine will just stop. So you, you, you reach a point of deregulation, the pump can't do anymore. Okay. So at, at 300 bar, it stops. Um, you're gonna get uh, 23 strokes per minute, but after 100 bar, now you need, you're changing pressure for volume. The pump's gotta convert at some point, so that's the conversion is 100. So um, you're gonna call me up, hey man, I'm only getting 20 yards an hour. Well, how much pressure you're in? Oh, about 200 bar. <laughs> that's the only thing you're gonna get. It's just too much, you know what I mean? You're, at, you're asking for pressure, not volume now. And that, that is obviously, if you have a, a thicker, slump that is obviously if you have a longer distance or if you're going up obviously that's going to put a lot of um, force against the face of the different of the material cylinders uh differential cylinders i mean now to wash it off uh we wash it off in reverse uh what, what is your recommendation here correct so um well, when, when you wash your uh you had a 750 a door uh, how, how do you wash it now first thing something. we do is we, we pump everything out of there bust this open and wash it down all the way to the front and uh, and I've washed through here we have a, a special scraper to be able to pull everything out and once I got that washed out I'd rock it over and get that piston all the way to the front and, uh, that's good that's good uh -huh. now on a, on, on a boots you can leave them whopping bam 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 while you're washing out but you're right on, on a swing you can't because there's a rubber seal and there's another rubber seal that sandwiches that rock valve in between the teeth of the steel there's rubber membrane so the more you stroke it without any concrete or water the worse you're going to tear it. So you, you are correct. You swap, in reverse, stroke it over. When it wops over, stop, break it. Wop, stop, break it. Right. I put everything back together, put a sponge in there, fill the hopper up full of water, clean your lines out. When the sponge pops out, boom, you're done. Everything on the truck. Um, as, there, as you or some your helper load and save, then you grease. That's your final step is greasing. So one full hopper of water is going to clean. Yeah. About 200 feet of hose. Correct, correct. So then after, after you grease on your final step, boom, you're done. Come on over here while the machine's running. Get your water box, dump your water box, fill it in, wash it out, stroke it about once or twice, check the bolt when it comes back, boom, check it again. When the other side comes back, boom, you're good. The bolts look tight, you're good. Put the, the stump pin back in, ready for tomorrow. Always leave it dry, and in the morning I fill it up. Um, what happens is, um, okay, um, the rod is hot in the center, but the packings are rubber. So as the machine gets hot, the packings expand. Um, when that rod cools down, it draws in water. Well, when the water's here, boom, the first stroke you make tomorrow, it returns it back to tank. Always leave it dry. Um, Schwing is a little bit more forgiving than poops as far as grease. I mean, it doesn't cost you, per se, so much to rebuild. But a, a bad operator put an asshole on especially if you're not greasing. It only take about 
100 yards, that's it, it's a deal. Once the bearing locks, what else you can do? You can take it all apart. Um, to rebuild it, it's $3,500 in the asset, you know what I mean? That's just a cost, you know, than whatever you got in labor, so. Always grease, that grease is cheap, two bucks a tube, you know, for oh, yeah. that grease to it, you know. It doesn't hurt it. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing. Yeah. These machines are a little bit more forgiving than, than the newer ones. I mean, there's not too many bells and whistles, not too much to get in trouble with. But uh, just remember, um, just like on your other pump, if you got a plug and you see pressure, you put it in one stroke in reverse, because it'll, yeah. it'll put a clamp through your head, no problem there. Yeah. I'm, you're going to get pumping and you're going to get 35, 40 yards an hour, and you're like, eh, well, it's all right, it's not that fast. <laughs> you build a lot of pressure real quick, though, you know, it'll put you on your end. I noticed with your company, you, you have PAEH that you'll use for for Linux. Right. Um, this one is still acceptable for Of course, you can do Linux easily with this one. You just got to be careful as far as the pressure goes. I, I suggest so you get a, a grate, a 160 grate like if they're in the rock is finer, doesn't let that rock go through. Right? This is a big rock grate, so it'll accept inch and a half Bigger. into a 2 inch and you know, you're going to have trouble. And, and what's going to happen is sometimes your mixer trucks are going to come with dried concrete or rocks on the top. As soon as they're lower that thing and they're starting to shake it, some of that rock is going to fall in your grade, and since you're going to be doing Lenos, Lenos is only two inch hose, your hose is going to plug up in no time. So if you're doing P rock all the time, and you're not going to do any big rock, then you can lay some, you know, number six bar, um, rebar, lay it on there and just hold it. And we can't do big rock. Yeah, you can. You can. You can do an inch and a half aggregate with this one. Right. The problem is not the machine, it's going to be the hose. It's going to be the hose. So if you're going to do an inch and a half aggregate, you're going to multiply that times three, an inch and a half times three is 4.5 inches. So you need a minimum of between four to five inch hose in order for that to go through with no issues. Otherwise, you're gonna be plugging maybe 50 to 60 percent of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, with a two inch hose, you will. And I know a lot of guys are using an inch and a half for windows now. I've seen a last couple of guys, and I mean that, that's even more. You got to reduce the screen down even more. You know what I mean? And most of my hose coming in is two and a half inches. So. Okay, two and a half inch, you'll be more than okay. More than okay. I just, I just lay something, something over the top. On top of the... A little bit smaller. You know, you can, you can even build yourself a little grate that we can throw it on and take it off the truck when you're not using it. And you got big rock and small rock. Mm -hmm. I see that, that's why I got that over there, for big rock and small rock. You know, if I go to a, a small rock and a, and a big rock pump, then I take the brake, zip tie it to it, use it for the day, and throw it off. The beautiful thing about this diesel, these are the BF4M 1012s. 1012s, yeah. Bulletproof. The best. Everybody nowadays are wanting to keep these and they want to get away from the tier 4 later, later generation. They don't want none of them. Exactly. So it, in order for you to buy an engine like this, it's going to cost you about twenty, seventeen, twenty-two thousand dollars $22,000, a bad. fully refurbished. Internet, yeah, you see them, they go, they go quick. And one... In, what, in fact, we've been looking here. Oh, right here, yeah. For two years now. That's yep. It's a, brand, it's a good pump. Oh, it's a 750. No engine. No engine. We haven't been able to find one. So, and the thing is, with this used equipment, you would think, well, they actually lose value. But these ones, because people are wanting them so much, you know, they want that tier three, tier two engine. They're actually gaining value because you cannot find them anymore. There's not that many out. 